Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Well, today we're shooting monster movies on the wrist. This is the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra Railmaster Chronometer XXL, part of the early 2000s reboot of the historic Omega Railmaster. This dramatically oversized timepiece can be seen and purchased on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy this video and Click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this 49mm manual wind Omega chronometer. This watch genuinely belongs to a class above and beyond conventional oversized watches. Above 42 millimeters, I start to think of a watch as oversized in the contemporary sense, but over 47 or 48 millimeters, we're talking about something different entirely. Like the Hublot King Power or the IWC Big Pilot, this is a giant sized watch, not an oversized watch. And yet, of the giant sized watches that I've experienced, this one wears best on my 16 centimeter wrist. First of all, it is 49 millimeters, a little more actually, across the round of the case, not inclusive of the crown not inclusive of the crown. The watch is surprisingly slim. At 12.5 millimeters thick, it's only about half a millimeter thicker than a Rolex Submariner, so it does fit easily underneath a sleeve. From lug to lug, it's big, and there's no doubt, 56 millimeters is big, but yet it does fit my wrist, and it fits in a way that an IWC Big Pilot nominally three millimeters smaller, just doesn't. This watch has a wonderful purchase on a smaller forearm, and I would even say down to 15 centimeters. You'll be able to wear this broad, flat timepiece with comfort, not so much a sense of proportion, because that's not the intention, but absolute security and good, solid, square-jawed looks. This watch rocks. Let me be honest about it. When this first came out in 2003 as the largest of the reborn Railmaster models, I immediately thought, well, I could wear that if, say, I were Shaq. Having put it on the wrist today for the first time, I can tell you, you don't need to be Shaq. You could be Muggsy Bogues. Honestly, you could wear this watch on any small wrist. If I can, you can. Under 15 centimeters, eh, you're borderline, but down to 15, you're golden. Take a look at the strap. It's beautifully made with small scale, light brown, rectangular, scale alligator leather with a contrasting stitch, a little bit pilot style, more than railroad. The clasp is of undoubted quality, beautifully polished. It has twin triggers to release, so quite secure until you positively disengage it. You want that on a big heavy timepiece like this. And then there's a minder system underneath, so any excess strap length gets tucked beneath the body of the clasp, and you don't have to have minder loops externally on the strap. It cleans up the aesthetic quite a good deal. The best way to describe the watch is one part Omega Seamaster Aquaterra, which is kind of the more genteel surf and turf version of the Seamaster, and one part pocket watch. In a lot of ways, this feels like a pocket watch for the wrist, like something a conductor slung out of his pocket and simply strapped on with welded lugs. But this is so much more beautifully integrated than that kind of jury-rigged arrangement. The lugs are beveled, beautifully polished, and the case flanks, which are long and narrow, not bulky and awkward, are beautifully satinated and brushed. You can see that the bezel is sloped, which helps you get a dress cuff over this watch if you want to go big and bold in formal attire. And the dial is very much a combination of historic Railmaster, a little bit of the CK2914 there from 1957, but also quite a bit of classic Seamaster references in the modern interpretation of the Broad Arrow Aquaterra. Everything you see here, indices and Arabic numerals, as well as hands at center, fully loomed for easy reading in the dark. This one glows like a torch. And on the case back, you can see a very simple dial. The case back matches that simple dial with a simple caliber. Simple, but excellent. In this case, less really is more protected in a case that grants it 150 meter water resistance, so it's a very versatile watch. You see here what Omega calls reference 2201. Now it's based on a traditional Unitas 6498-2 pocket watch movement, and you can see why. It's huge. The movement itself is bigger than a 36 millimeter Rolex Datejust, the whole watch. You can see that it also features a very traditional powertrain. When you wind it, the power goes through the crown wheel to the ratchet wheel. Just beneath that is the mainspring barrel. You can see the click and the click spring that prevents the mainspring barrel from turning backwards. Center wheel, third wheel, 
fourth wheel, escape wheel, anchor, balance. And that huge balance, which is almost a third of the width of the entire caliber, beats away at a nice stately 21,600 vibrations per hour. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer, 17 joules, adjusted in five positions and to temperature. And it has a superb 53 hour manual wind power reserve. So you get to wind this one every other day. It doesn't need to be a daily chore. But won't you love to interact with a watch? This watch is aesthetically, physically, historically, and even from a novelty perspective, quite satisfying. This is a way to wear one of the monster class oversized watches without looking cartoonish and without suffering fit problems on a smaller wrist. This is a truly special modern Omega that I believe even more than the 2017 Railmaster recreation is going to be remembered as a rare and desirable exception to all the Omega rules. This is a distinctive watch and a classic in the making. You can see it and you can buy it on our website.